name is Susan Ho, and the procedure I had was a kidney pancreas transplant. It's Andy Dykstra. I'm a lung transplant recipient. My name is Clarence Mills. I had a liver transplant. Reed Wiley. I had a double lung, liver, and pancreas transplant. Now having a three-year-old son and another one on the way, to me it's a miracle. Everything turned around. It was a life to live. Great after their surgery. <laughs> it really happened and I have to be like, it really happened. It's amazing. I think this is the best transplant program in the world. The people here are amazing. The things that they're doing are revolutionary. Toronto General is a leader in the field of transplantation and it really uh, speaks not only to the uh, transplant program but the institution itself. The people that have contributed to its genesis and its ongoing growth have been amazing people who've truly been dedicated to furthering the science and the clinical care of transplant patients. We've got a pool of talent where we recruited people from all over the world. Looking back now, it feels unbelievable just because of how much my life has changed or the quality of life is now um, compared to the, the years leading up to my transplant. The transplant of an organ into a patient really transforms their lives. I wasn't hooked on to any machines. I didn't have to take insulin anymore. I never thought that that was possible. Thinking about life before, how it was just so different from what it is now and I look forward to the many post years that I will have. When I first was working in the transplant unit, the average age of a patient was probably 40. Now we have patients that are 90 years old. The technologies and the advances that we've made in the discipline in the area have been at a pace that's remarkable as compared to many other fields of medicine. It's changed the face of medicine really and opened up a completely new opportunity for people who previously had no, you know, no hope. As I got worse, outlook on life was looking dim. I was pretty sick before the transplant. The few months before I was basically in and out of hospital for a couple weeks at a time, each time. It got bad when uh, I had a series of internal infections over the past five years caused by failure of the liver. And I was in the hospital and I had a series of mini strokes. He was sick for a very long time. So you kind of almost forget who the, the real Peter was. I couldn't walk from the back of the house in a hurry to the front door to answer it. If I did, I couldn't speak to you because I was out of breath. I think about how I used to plan my transit route where I, with the oxygen going to work. Like I would get off a stop ahead so I could walk downhill instead of walk uphill because that was too much exertion. Trying to figure out what that meant. I mean, suddenly you've been given an expiry date and you try to figure out how you're supposed to live with two young kids and a career and your marriage and everything that I had worked so hard for didn't matter anymore. They were gravely ill, um, terminally ill. When we arrived back in Canada, you know, went to our local pediatrician, and then we were referred to the you know university hospital network. Well, I've always said I've, I'm amongst superheroes. Three-year-old Ben Wagner is reunited with her twin after getting a liver transplant, just like her sister. This is a great story. Both surgeries took place in Toronto. The girl's adoptive dad was a match, but he could only donate to one twin. He got choked up on Tuesday thanking the anonymous donor who saved the life of his other little girl. He was incredibly brave to come forward. <laughs> the public was captivated by the idea that this poor family, and the father in particular, found himself in a position where he could provide a gift but only save the life of one of his children. The whole time I was here, I was just shocked at the competence, the calm nature of these people, the compassion they have. You're in awe the whole time you're in a room, and it's from everybody who works in the hospital. It's through the entire system. They took two terminally ill girls and changed their world. 
on the backs of our live donor liver transplant program, our, our huge uh, experience in liver transplantation and all organ transplantation, we were able to make it possible for those twins to get a liver transplant. The surgery is only one part of transplantation and what we do is once a patient's had a transplant, they're our patient for the rest of their lives. This goes beyond just the doctors and surgeons, but the nurses are also the ones who are watching you around the clock. They are amazing. Can't say enough good things about care at TGH. The transplant program here, they have a nurse practitioner who follows you um, post-transplant that you know, you can leave messages for on their easy call program and they respond to you right away. And you see in the days and the weeks and the months and the years that go by how they heal and get well and strong and, and healthy again. And it never grows old. Every single patient that you watch that happen to, is it's just like magic every single time. For me, uh, my day-to-day -day experience is amazing because I get to interact with people whose lives have changed in this way and it's really the reason why we wake up in the morning and why we smile uh, at the end of the day. Ex vivo organ perfusion is a fascinating concept. Part of our research is how do you make the body see that organ as self? And with ex vivo organ perfusion, we finally have an amazing, unprecedented opportunity where we can take the organ from the donor, put it on a, on a machine, and modify it, change it, make it look more like self, make it less likely to be rejected. The first organ repair center in the world is OR18 at Toronto General Hospital. And we showed that concept to the world where we first started repairing lungs there, now livers and kidneys, we will do hearts. The process is called ex vivo organ assessment and repair. This is really an area of medicine that's, you know, one of modern medicine's real miracles. We're building organ regeneration uh, laboratories, organ regeneration operating rooms, facilities where we can park organs on ex vivo perfusion machines, um, basically a liver in a corner, a heart in a corner, a lung in a corner, and wait for them to recover. While the things that we're doing in our program in transplantation have the potential to revolutionize every area of medicine, to treat organ failure, to treat all sorts of diseases, not just transplantation. Who is this? This is my liver giver. This is Alita. <laughs> sad at one respect because you know my best friend was sick and and she had a long journey ahead of her but I was also hopeful because there was an option to make her better he came in and he said my legs got tired not my lungs and yeah it's amazing how a transplant can completely change a person's life and be back to how he was eight years ago it's it's truly amazing. I was able to be there for my two girls when I graduated. My granddaughter, you know, I've seen her being born. If I'm rushing to work or rushing to catch a bus, I'm like out of breath and getting to the stop and then I stop and think and I'm like, four years ago, I, I couldn't, I could not have done this. I couldn't have expected my life at this point, um, with the diagnosis that I had five years ago, to feel like this, to look like this. To be able to sit here and experience life the way I am is the most remarkable thing ever. 649 is nothing on this, <laughs> seriously. You're seeing amazing now at Toronto General and in Canada because philanthropy supported us. An organ transplant is more of a routine surgery nowadays. They do so many of them each week in Toronto General. It's because of investment dollars and research and development dollars uh, pr being given by the private sector. I think that investment in transplant is investment in people because it's investment in research too. And when you do research, you help thousands. It has saved my life twice and without uh, these wonderful and, and kind people, I wouldn't be here today. It's simply amazing. 
Amazing. Amazing. Amazing. Amazing. Amazing. Amazing. Amazing.